you, I was just chatting with um, Maggie Rose uh, on a recent episode. She's wonderful. And, yeah, she's amazing. And we were talking about like, even some of the other people that have become viral on social, like the hawk to a girl, like, it's like, but that that's going to come and go. And if you don't have the right people around you, it's going to, like, you're not going to, you're not going to be set up for the future. 100%. And you, it's in, I think that you saying like that you don't have a viral song on the social platforms, but you have the following. You right. are, people are following you. They're showing up at your shows. They're listening to your music. That's what you actually want as an artist, not to be the next viral thing because you're 100%. not even listening to the song. 100%. And it's like, okay, so think about um, like the big playlist, right? That dictate your, your monthly listener number, which I just made a tweet about this the other day. But I was like, the way that this industry puts so much pressure on a, on a monthly listener number, but it's completely dictated by backstage in the music business. Yeah. And it's not legit. And people in the music business are putting, how am I, how am I trying to say this? Like they, they're relying on that number to make their artists look like super buzzworthy. Right. But if you have, if you pull the curtain back and you have 2 million monthly listeners and you can't sell 300 tickets yeah. with your name on it. Yeah. There's something. What wrong. are we yeah. talking about? Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's kind of like, it's like, um, if you get added to hot country, right. Which I have never had a song on hot country. The biggest song I've ever, the biggest playlist I've ever been added to was new boots. And that was ever leave. That was the first time I ever got added yeah. to a playlist. So that is, I have 200 million streams without ever being playlisted. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have, someone can get one song on hot country and get 50 million streams on their song like that. Now, cool. That's all fine and dandy for your bank account because we all know what you're making, especially if you own everything, which 90% of the artists that are out there don't own everything. They've right. sold it away. Me personally, I own my publishing and I own everything. Yeah. Um, so my text probably look a little different than theirs because when you sign these deals, you sign away 80% usually. Yeah. Um, and then your publishing is split 50, 50 or maybe worse than that. Yeah. So really those are the people that are complaining about the streaming revenue, not really kind of being a drop in the bucket. Right. Yeah. But if you own everything and you get 50 million streams on a song, that revenue is actually pretty substantial. Yeah. And so when I go back to hot country, if I were to get a song added to hot country, which would be super cool. Hot country. If you're listening, would love that. Um, but, <laughs> yes. but no, if you get a song added to hot country and your monthly listeners shoot, mm -hmm. guess what's going to happen when you get pulled off of that, that playlist, yeah. they're just going to drop. Yeah. And guess what? No one who's flipping through hot country has any idea who they're listening to. Right. Because if you flip through, Currently, right now, and this is just my opinion, and it might be a little controversial. Give it to me. But I can't tell the difference between five of other artists on Hot Country and Morgan Wallen. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. There are Absolutely. five other artists on Hot Country right now. If I just flip through, I think every one of them is Morgan. Yeah. I mean, and that's what, that's another th sort of, quote, marketing plan that the labels have right now is like, everybody's sounding the same. Nothing like has any kind of real authenticity anymore because it's truly just like, how do you get as the, as most out of this artist as fast out of this artist? And then right. like you kind of get unfortunately left for dead a lot of times. And, you know, it's like you, I, I mean, I don't know all of the ins and outs, but I imagine that like you weren't at Warner long because they mm -hmm. probably didn't put invest enough in you. They probably didn't like, put you in the right place mm -hmm. to actually see what you are capable of. And then if you weren't performing at a certain level, they just didn't do anything because they were onto what was actually like bringing in money for them. And that's like, they're not willing to put in what they want out of kind of these deals and these artists and stuff. And, and that's so it, sad. Yeah. And that's totally. sad because, you know, you have, you like, end up missing out on a lot of really good talent that way I too. I mean, look what happened to Chapel Rome. Yeah. yeah. 
And and that's that's she actually literally got dropped from her label. Also, like she is my favorite artist right now. Like yeah. I am completely obsessed with the record. I listen to it every single day, all the way down. Like I am back in my Jonas Brothers phase, but with Chapel <laughs> Road. I'm like such a stan. Amazing. And um, but anyways, the fact that she got dropped, it's like what a fumble. Mm. Who you know what I'm saying? And, Who fumbled that? She is well, like and, a she is like a once one of those once in a lifetime artists, yeah. you know, she's like Madonna or she, she's like um, Lady Gaga. Like mm-hmm. she's just right outside the box enough. Yeah. And then the music, and then you listen to the way that she's telling the stories, but unlike anybody else has ever told the story, it's just yeah. incredible. Who fumbled that? That's crazy. Yeah. 